and look at their operations from a financial standpoint, really focusing on what do I need in order to grow the business and sustain the business. Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Business Talk Library, and today I have a guest on. It is a interesting topic that I think that so many people can can relate to as what we're going through right now with everything with the pandemic. And as a accountant and a finance professional, it's always good to have another finance professional on <laughs> to talk about different topics related to your business. So welcome to the show, Ms. Shanice. Thank you so much for having me. I'm pretty excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. So, Jenny, tell us a little bit about your background and your company, AccuTrack. Wonderful. So, I am Shanice Bennett. I'm a CPA, which is a certified public accountant, and I am the managing principal and sole owner of AccuTrack Consulting and Accounting Services. We provide financial management services to both government agencies as well as government contractors. And what differentiates our companies from some others is that we use the financial management to help business owners and government agencies make better decisions. So we're not just focused on the numbers, we're focused on what can we use those numbers for to help our businesses grow and sustain. And I think that that's a very good point because that, that's something I always, I guess, try to stress and throughout my corporate career, with, whether it's working for General Electric or working for tech startups, is mm -hmm. the numbers are there kind of to, to, to help you make those decisions. And so when you have someone that can understand the numbers and then actually translate it into, hey, what do you need to do about it? It makes a huge difference. So how long have you had your practice? So I started my firm all by myself about 11 years ago. And I say I started out of an opportunity or almost need. My background is manufacturing accounting. In this particular area, the manufacturing industry was on a decline and many small manufacturers needed accounting services but couldn't quite necessarily afford the larger firms. And hence that became the opportunity. Um, the numbers were written on the wall. Companies saw what was going on in the automotive industry, but they didn't know, well, what does that mean to my firm? Our goals was to take those numbers and take your numbers and help you make decisions. It became a roadmap. Sometimes we have so many different options to choose from and we're going down so many different roads, but your numbers can be a roadmap to get you to where you want to go. Kind of put the blinders on a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, to be clear, you are in the Detroit area? Yes, Metro Detroit, born and raised. <laughs> so what was it like just seeing the, I guess, the economic landscape of Detroit drastically change over the years? What was that like? It was an adjustment. That's the best way to describe it. And it's still an adjustment. We are manufacturing driven people around here. And now that we have new technologies, um, we utilize a lot of the web services. It's a different thing because we're so hands on around here. Um, so it's just changing is definitely an adjustment. Um, we're seeing smaller changes in certain areas. They haven't necessarily filtered out to others, but change that happens rapidly can also reverse rapidly or also have negative impacts. So it's a slow change. And I think we're all adjusting to it accordingly. Okay. And then speaking of change, I mean, with everything that's going on with the coronavirus or COVID-19, um, it has brought on a whole new speed of rapid change. So what are some of the things that you've seen with some of your clients and just looking at the business landscape? I think the biggest thing that we have seen when it comes to COVID-19 is the importance of the numbers and the importance of having a good foundation. So a lot of folks, we all know that monies didn't come down to small businesses as quickly as they probably should have. 
And part of that is you have to be ready. Your numbers have to be ready. Loans are driven on financials. And so one of the things that we are now finding is that a lot of our small business clients is taking a look at their operations from a financial standpoint, really focusing on what do I need in order to grow the business and sustain the business versus to just give me as much money as possible. We're really doing needs analysis. I need X number of dollars for the next two weeks and then two weeks after that versus just having a certain dollar amount in the bank account or just being able to pay the bills. We're really looking at how much cash am I going to spend over the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an interesting point. I was talking to a client of mine and when everything started coming out about the loans and the interest rates being so low, is you know his first thought was oh man i can go take out an even bigger loan and because it's gonna i mean the cash is gonna be cheap to pay back and i was like well what are you gonna actually do with the money like what do you need it for like if you're taking out a loan and you don't actually have a business use for it i don't think it's gonna be in your best interest to do that <laughs> I agree wholeheartedly. And one of the things that we're consulting on is taking these loans. If it's not forgiven, it's a loan. The true definition of a loan is it has to be paid back. Do you have an operations to support paying that back? And now we're having folks take a step back and say, you know what? Maybe I don't need as much as I thought I wanted because there was no needs analysis being done before. It was just the more money I have, the better off I am. But again, it's a loan. It must be paid back. Does your operations provide you with enough cash flow to pay it back? Tough questions that some of us just haven't thought about before, at least not in the in-depth method. Mm -hmm. Now, can you talk a little bit more about some of those things where business could have been doing or things they could have been process they could have been putting in place so that, hey, when a program like the, you know, that the federal government released, they could have been in position to qualify for it? I get my number one advice to the businesses who are finding themselves not ready to apply is having your books in order. What I mean by books in order, your financial statements. You don't need a CPA per se. You don't need an accountant, but at least having your financials recorded in a systematic format where you can be able to pull and say, this is how much money I made over the last two months. How much money did I bring in? What did I spend it on? There are a lot of softwares out here that allow you to do that. There are a lot of banks that allow you to do that. So instead of waiting until it's time to file a report or tax return, why not just have all that information systematically recorded so that you can easily pull it? I'm not saying it has to be a thousand or a hundred percent correct, but at least you have access to the information. So bookkeeping, Focus on recording your transactions from your bank statements at least once a month. And that gives you a starting point to be able to analyze and to be able to determine how much cash you need and whether or not you have enough cash coming in to be able to pay it off in the future. You have a starting point. Please do your bookkeeping at least once a month. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I say I, I learned I, uh, that stuck with me very, very much so uh, for my time at GE was if you can't measure it and you're not tracking it, you won't be able to drive it and you won't be able to actually show improvements in this area. And I think that's something I, I emphasize with any business owner is if you aren't tracking your numbers, like you said, at least once a month then it's like, how do you know you're headed in the right direction? It's like, how do you know things are going well? Or, hey, how do you know when you need to make a change or pivot if you're not tracking your numbers? I agree. And I think that one of the things that will come out of COVID-19 crisis is that small businesses will start to look at things from that perspective. I'm used to referring to small businesses or some as lifestyle businesses. As long as my bills are paid, I'm good. The question is, will your bills be paid three months from now? So now we have a measuring stick. We're going to look at finances and what did we do last first quarter? Will we have enough money in fourth quarter 21 to start paying back this loan? So I think a lot of small businesses are transitioning and sometimes we need that nudge and for those of us who are not ready to apply or have not received our loans let's figure out what is it that we lack what did we not have when it was time to apply for these loans and let's make that a priority again there's so many things out here that we can do but what is the one or two things that you did not have that made you ineligible or not ready to apply and if it's financials work on that 
Mm-hmm. Awesome. And, you know, as I, as we talked before the interview, one of the things that also stood out to me uh, about your background is not only with just providing services that people can hire you, hire your firm for the work that you do in helping educate people on how to succeed in their business and help educate them from your perspective. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, your background there as far as the, the teaching and helping people understand and the, and the webinars or I guess however you approach that? So I'm a lifetime learner. I absolutely love to learn and share knowledge. And it was my husband who gave me the idea, well, if you're going to continue to train and pay for training, you should get paid to do it. And so that's what I started to do. So I teach for a couple programs, Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. I teach that here in Detroit as well as nationally. I even teach some accounting and auditing courses to government employees. What makes me a little bit different and it's a little challenging because I am a CPA, we're held to a certain standard, but I bring things down to the level that it applies to you. So when we talk about planning for the future, I'll describe your financials in these terms of whether or not you're sending your child to community college or whether or not your child is going to a university, if that's what it takes to get you to understand it. And so my goal is whenever I train that you can walk away and implement something that was taught. And if you cannot necessarily implement it, you know where to go to get more information. You have direction. And I want to make sure you understand it. So we'll take a profit and loss statement and say, this is a trip to Fiji. (laughs) And this is a trip to Florida. Which one do you want? And if you want to get to Fiji, let's talk about how to get there. Wow. Good. Awesome. So where can people find you? Whether it's on social media or what's the website for your business? Yeah, so I'm all over LinkedIn, Shanice Bennett. I am my aunt's niece. So that means my name is S-H-A, niece, N-I-E-C-E, Bennett. Two N's, two T's. My firm at website is AccuTrack, A-C-C-U-T-R-A-K dot biz. You'll find a lot of information out there, resources. We post references. We post resources about how to track PPP loans. Uh, we do webinars and all that information will be posted on both my LinkedIn and the website. Awesome. Awesome. And before we wrap up the interview, one question I like to ask all of the business owners and business leaders that come on the show is what is, and I know there might be a ton, what is one piece of wisdom you picked up or that you would share that you've learned from your experience in running your business? Yeah, of course there are a lot, but the one that resonates the most is Yes, I'm a professional, but there are other professionals out here too, HR professionals, marketing professionals. So when I reach out to those folks and they give me their advice, I find it valuable to actually implement it. It's one thing to learn and have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't implement, then what's the purpose? So when I reach out to other professional service providers and they say, Shanice, you should do X, Y, Z, I check and I say, am I the professional or are they the professional? And if they're the professional, I want to take the advice. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Ms. Shanice, thank you so much for coming on the show and all the best with all your endeavors and with your business and all the training that you are doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity and everyone stay safe and let's make this thing turn around for the better of all of our small businesses.